the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading from the prophet Micah. Now muster your troops, O daughter of troops. Siege is laid against us. With a rod they strike the judge of Israel on the cheek. But you, O Bethlehem Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has given birth. Then the rest of his brothers shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall dwell secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be their peace. The coming of the Messiah is foretold in some detail by the prophets. Some detail, but not all. One of those details, which was obvious enough for Jewish leaders to answer King Herod's inquiry, where is the Christ to be born? In Bethlehem, of course. The prophet Micah 700 years earlier gave the location of the Savior's birth. However, the prophet gave us more than a map. It's not just a detail he provides, but the whole description of the Messiah, how he will come, where he comes from, and what he will do. Just like his father David, David's greater son comes seemingly out of nowhere. Just as Jesse's sons were lined up by Samuel to anoint the next king of Israel, while David was out with the flocks. From this backwater town of Bethlehem, though, comes Israel's greatest king. And from this same line, this same town, comes another humble son. From his crib of a manger to his donkey ride into Jerusalem, he always seems too lowly, too little to be such a great king, such a savior. Yes, he comes from Bethlehem, but his true origins are further back. He comes forth from of old, from David and the promise of of a son to sit on his throne, from Abraham's promised offspring. He comes even from a promise given in the garden for a seed of the woman to come and crush the satanic serpent. But even more ancient than this is the eternal will and plan of God to send forth his son. From eternity God loved. And in time, that love for you caused his incarnation, his birth. Where does he come from? He comes from the eternal love of God. And when he comes, after a time of captivity and restoration, after sin and rebellion has had its day, then he will come and be the ruler over Israel, not an earthly ruler. But he will come, and like David of old, he will be the shepherd of his people. He will save them from their sins. And having once come from Bethlehem, having preached in Galilee, suffered and died, rose and ascended at Jerusalem, then he will come again this time in the strength and majesty of God, no more lowliness now. Now that he has won the victory over sin, Satan, and death itself, then he will return, and he will set his waiting, still suffering brothers free from all of this, and set them at peace. Let us pray. Come, Lord Jesus. Save your people from the dangers of their sins. Forgive them and be their shepherd forever. Come quickly. Amen.